All right, guys. So I've got Jose on the channel. And, um, you know, me and Jose, we, we only met just, I think, I think in the past few, few weeks, actually. And mm -hmm. Jose is a very big crypto enthusiast and very heavy into NFT gaming, play to earn gaming, what's going on in the Web3 space. One thing I love doing is I love interviewing legitimate, authentic people like Jose who can share their knowledge to, to people out there that want to actually learn about cryptocurrencies, learn about NFTs, learn about the Web3 revolution. And, you know, this is just a down-to-earth interview. This is just purely a one-to-one -one interview, down-to-earth, sharing some knowledge, you know, helping the community grow. And as you know, I'm on 32,000 followers and growing, you know, pretty fast and keeping the gas on the pedal, like, like I say, and it's just great to get, a, you know, a community together to share their knowledge. And one first things first is I just want to say this is not financial advice or investment advice. This is just purely an educational video interview, sharing some of our knowledge. I'm just a guy off the internet to tell people about what cryptocurrencies are, what is NFTs, what is Web3. So take this as a learning part of your education, not any sort of financial advice, along with all my other video interviews I do. So, yeah, it's always important for me to share education and try to cut out the hype. That's kind of who I stand for. So, Jose, great to have you, mate. Thank you for having me here, Nas. I'm, I'm happy to contribute to your community. Great stuff. So we're talking about NFTs. We're talking about Web3. You know, we're, we're going to keep this short because obviously people's attention span sometimes can not last more than 20 minutes. So we're talking about <laughs> NFTs, Web3. We're talking about the basics. We're talking about, you know, what, what people can learn from it. So, you know, I'm going to ask you sort of like five questions. You know, we're going to go straight to the point. Uh, keep it short and sweet so people can learn about this. And I just hope at the end of it, people will be like, yep, yeah, I've learned something here in this video interview from Naz and Jose. So, Jose, tell us about yourself first before we go into the questions. All right. Uh, well, again, thank you to thank you to have me to, for having me here. Um, I'm Jose Sanchez. Uh, I'm a Web3 founder. I'm a Solana developer. I I am a Web3 enthusiast, a blockchain evangelist, um, a little bit of everything, even a Christian pastor, if you can say it. But um, I love uh, this new technology. I try to educate people on, on LinkedIn. Actually, that's one of my main focus, to educate people on LinkedIn, uh, to, uh, to help um, more adoption of this new technology, crypto, NFTs, Web3 in general. So that's, that's what, I, what, I, what I do. And, I, and I've seen you quite active on LinkedIn, always posting about NFTs and Web3. And you're, you are building like a community yourself, you know, community of your followers. So my first question is, is where do you see play to earn gaming heading, Jose? Where do you see that aspect of crypto uh, uh, heading? Well, I play to earn. It's a very it's a very interesting subject because in the last year we've seen how this type of business model has has a let's say has grown but at the same time i think yeah. it has shown us that there's some weak points in terms of of this uh, uh, business model i think play to earn will continue to grow i think uh, crypto will be adopted a lot more thanks to web3 uh, but but i'm i'm very very hopeful that companies focus in the experience more than in the token itself because right. what we saw for example with axie infinity is that the experience was not that good the token was good but the experience was not that good so when this market uh, came yeah you know this bear market unfortunately people were not there because of the game they were there because of the token and they left so that's that's what i'm thinking it's going to continue growing i think it has a lot of potential but developers have to focus in the experiences yeah, and I think a lot of people are just coming in for the hype, like you say, but but then they're not actually playing the game, right? They're not contributing to the experiences. And, you know, what some of the big analysts around the world are saying that we need to focus on utility, you know, utility drives adoption. I totally agree with you. I don't think we're there yet. 
Yeah, and I think uh, it, you're, you're right uh, mentioning utility. Uh, some people, some some people are very passionate about this technology, and they think that utility is not that important. Uh, more, they're focused more in the art or NFTs, which is it's understandable. But indeed, utility it's it's a very important aspect for uh, especially for crypto, because as you know, Bitcoin is is the the top let's say the top tier of, of, of uh, coins in the crypto world, yet Ethereum is more used, is, there's more transactions in Ethereum because yeah. the utility of Ethereum is much wider than the one of Bitcoin. So I think um, play to earn, let's say learn to earn, teach to earn, engage to earn, all of these, um, uh, let's say uh, models are going to succeed tremendously and they will be creating new tokens. I'm pretty sure they will, be creating new tokens, but not in the way that people perhaps per perceive it as, a, as an investment form or perhaps, a, no, it's more like a utility a utility a key for a specific platform. Yeah. Um, for example, I, 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 I saw a project recently that is, they, they launched recently and it's called HomeCube. Okay. And it's this marketplace is HomeCube, uh, homecube.io. And it's, it's a marketplace for designers and architects. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to see that. What they do is that you, you are a, an architect and you, you make your design an NFT and then somebody can purchase the rights of your, of your, of your architecture um, as an NFT. And also the platform will, will help you if you're a, one of the buyers, it will help you to find, let's say the materials, the, the, all, all, everything, everything that has to do with the construction of that wow. specific design. Yeah, so it's it's amazing, and they have their own token. So they will be launching very soon, but I think it's going to be based on the utility that they provide. Their token is going to be using their platform. So that's that's what I think is going to play very good in the future. Wow, we can talk about that later. So tell us a bit, what is Web three to my audience? How can you define a lot of? There's still you know misinformation out there, and we still need to educate our community. You know, our community about this sort of. What is Web3 in your eyes and how can you explain it to my audience in a simple way? Okay, um, <clears throat> sorry, to make it simple, Web3 is just the logical evolution of the internet. And this evolution will, will allow the, the community or users to have ownership on assets, ownership on their, on their personal or privacy, let's say personal information or privacy, and also to be contributors uh, to, to the economy of the internet. So Web3 is going to allow people to connect to other people, also to, to things, you know, to, to material things and also to, to places. Um, Web3 is simply, you know, you know, you make it more simple, is the internet Web2 connected to the blockchain. That's, that's what it is. So right, blockchain right. technology is the one who's going to allow many things to happen in uh, in the space so uh, that's how I, I would summarize it i hope it's a it's easy yeah to understand. <laughs> i hope my audience sort of uh, caught some of that but um the way i see web3 it's like a rewarding economy which we're moving from the well, yes moving from this information age to now more community driven more uh focused on uh, rewarding you for your time your effort whether you're playing a game or you're learning something, this is being monetized in Web3. And now the community is getting something back rather than the Googles or the Facebooks. You know, this is the yes, way exactly. I see Web3, Web3 uh, evolving like this. Yes, you mentioned something important, monetizing. So what was monetized, it was monetized before, but not by the by the people or the users, but it wasn't, by the it was by, by the big giants, yeah. Yeah, the big giants. So now it's going to be, it can it can be, not, not necessarily it's going to be, but it can be monetized by the user itself. Uh, uh, um, a model that I was, uh, I was sharing a while ago in your previous question was engage to earn. And that's, that's, right. that's something that, that it's you, missing. you it's, yeah, it's missing in the, in the current uh, model in which you watch a video. Sometimes you like your, your let's say, for example, somebody likes your, your content, NAS, and um, because they like you, they want to watch the entire video. And then this in Web3, they will be compensated by watching the entire video, let's say, or your podcast or your content, you know, or 
reading the entire article or engaging, placing a like is going to compensate you. Not necessarily that you're going to become rich by, yeah. by you know, interacting, but it's going to have an impact in the way we live because now you're gonna to receive tokens, social tokens by given by NAS, for example, and I will be able to exchange them for goods in the supermarket or, or in another place, you know, I can yeah. accumulate from different platforms and perhaps not to make it my income, but it's going to be my compensation for the time that I have invested in, in online. And I think that's a good way of making a small little income on the side, you know, yeah, uh, we have. for helping out to, for, for helping you out actually contribute and give your time to people so where do you see nfts tell us about our nfts jose what, what what what's the fair value of nfts and and do they have a use case because i think it's a little bit of a funny one this one you know nfts can be num a number of different things it can be collectible <clears throat> arts it can be you know uh transferring uh of assets between um some JPEGs to another JPEG. It could be a number of different, it could be music NFTs. What do you see? And how can, how do you explain NFTs to my audience? Well, if I want, if I want to explain NFTs is just um, unique digital assets. You know, they have, they have a, a, a uniqueness, they have a rarity and they have some data that cannot be um, changed. For example, um, let's say a contract. I see in the future lawyers using NFTs for contracts, you know, for contract right. signing um, or like uh, the documents. Recently, there was a, a purchase of a house in an NFT. So they, what they did is like they, they minted the picture of the house and the persons who bought the, the NFT got the, 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 they say the papers or the paperwork behind the the house, the real wow. property, the real asset. But what I've seen, what I've seen so far is just the tip of the iceberg. I really don't think that um, the value is yet there as a, as a member of a club, perhaps, you know, because as we've seen with the, yeah, uh, you agree. know, club, it's, it's, a, it's a membership of an elite club but I don't see as a person, as a regular person, I see the value that is going to be. There's no me. utility. Yeah, exactly. There's no utility there. If I like it and I have the and I have the money, why not? But if I don't, I really don't like it. Uh, but you know, if even if I like it, why would I like to play a video game of, of monkeys? You know, like yeah. um, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't to me. make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the the for art, it's very useful, and I think that's the main use case for NFTs now, and in the future is going to play a big role in music in in art, in paintings, in like architects, for example, on design, all of that, I think is going to have a good impact. And I see a very good, let's say, um, future uh, and value for NFTs in art, collectibles yeah. as well, you know, they, they're connected. Yeah. But um, memberships as well, but the way we are seeing it today as like a $100,000 picture of, of something without any any utility or any purpose behind it just because somebody was so cool and then they gave it, you know, or for example, what happened with Board Aid Yacht yeah. Club is that they, they gave them for free and they didn't say that. They gave them for free to artists, you know, to, to celebrities so they can showcase the NFT and, and make a perceived value of it as an elite uh, picture, as an elite project. And that's how actually, well, they were clever, but I don't think there was real, real, real value for common people like you and me, I don't see it. So I think it's going to continue growing in a sense that that not in, in as an investment for like the way we, we have seen it, but I see it more like, for example, PFPs for companies, you know, Coca-Cola yeah. can launch their own yeah. PFP NFPs, you yeah. know, and you know, they're, they're, they're really nice collectible and you will keep it forever because it's going to be your, your, uh, Profile yeah. picture when you were working for for Coca Cola, for example. You know. Yeah, yeah. So, the way I so see NFTs that's... is like celebrities. So you know, you have an NFT of a celebrity, and it's a unique one, and it's the only one, and and you digitize that, and you digitize that into the platform, and you're the only holder of that piece. So say if you have a an NFT of Muhammad Ali, right, and you digitize mm -hmm. that, there's value to be driven there. Because 
imagine, you know, Muhammad Ali knocking out, you know, the boxers, right? And uh, I don't know, I don't know some of his fights he's had. If you captured that into, into the only digitization of that moment and you digitize <clears> that, I think there's some sort of value driven there from the celebrity, um, where the celebrity derives the value, drives it to the NFT, and you're the only holder of that NFT. And you might store that onto a chip or, 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 or to some sort of like, um, like unique, uh, 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 a unique uh, like a holding or a gathering of, of that actual piece of NFT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you there, but there's something that you have to notice. I think, for example, in the case of Muhammad Ali, I think it would be, it would drive value if Muhammad Ali today is the one minting the NFTs and selling them. That's right. Why? Because, That's right. Yes. Because you yes. know what happens. Yes. What happens is that there's a there's there's a lot of footage that is already out there. You know, everybody can download it. But it's different if Muhammad Ali digitally sign it and mint it, and then you have a digital signature there made by him and with a note, a special note that says "Thank you for buying this. This is a, today is my birthday." Whatever he wants to put there, you know coming from Muhammad Ali, that's that's what I think is, it would be very valuable because remember what happened with the Jack Dorsey's tweet, you know, he sold it for $2 million, but yeah. then later on, nobody wanted to, to buy it because um, indeed, well, everybody, anybody can can just screenshot that, that tweet that he had. He yeah. didn't do anything special. He didn't add any note. He didn't put any effort to, to like add some data in that NFT. So basically he, he bought it, he sold it for $2 million and the one who bought it is trying to sell it. And I think he got, he got offered $1,400. Right, you know, right, right. Yeah, is, yeah. Unfortunately, just, yeah. <laughs> so we'll keep it simple. We'll go, we'll go back to the simple aspects for yeah. our community because, you know, we don't want to go too technical, but yeah, that, that's, that's, that's good to hear. So how do you see Web3 uh, growing in potential, especially with adoption and the way crypto is heading to in this space? You know, that's a good question because, um, yeah, that's a good question. I think for crypto, Web3 is going to do for crypto uh, a, lot of, a lot of work, let's say. Yeah, Web three is going to help crypto adoption. You know why? Because as we mentioned, you know Bitcoin, Ethereum. There, there's many tokens. They're gonna be able to with Web three. They're gonna be able to be transactable. You know, easily. You will not be needing for a specific exchange just to go there and do some some business to change your your Bitcoin into into fiat currency. But instead, I think Web three is going to allow p users to exchange any type of digital good with any type of crypto. That's what, yeah. I, what I see it. Um, of course, interoperability is very important in that sense, but we don't get into that technicality. Uh, what I think is, is, is very good, Web3 is going to help mass adoption of crypto in general. Okay. And many countries like world countries are going to be benefiting from this, you know, wow. um, being, yeah. being able to receive your, your salary or or being able to be hired by a company in the U.S. when you're in Uganda, and then being able to get paid, you know, without any yeah. any any legality going there in between, you know, that's that's what I see the the value. The economy is growing, people yeah. are getting included in the economy, and that's what I like. You know, I, I argue, I argue, we're not really there yet. We're not. No, really we're not there yet. We're, we're not. We're not there yet. We, we're in the building blocks of it all, and. I be believe you me. There's going to be more failures than success in the next. No, actually, yes. In the next few we're, years, we're, crypto yes. will. I think crypto will grow. Don't get me wrong; it will grow. But I think we're not just yet there yet. Would you agree? Yeah, actually, yeah. Thank you for saying that because I want to clarify for, for people who are watching. We are in a, in a testing early. phase of the three early yes. early stage. So there's nothing really well developed yet in Web three. Um, so it's very early. That's why it's a good time for developers to enter in the space. You know, fashion brands are looking for developers of, of their own blockchain. Yeah. They want to do their own blockchains. So we are early. So as you said, there's going to be many failures. But one thing will remain. If you're talking about crypto, Bitcoin will stay. You know, Ethereum will stay. Uh, Solana will stay. I don't think they're going anywhere. 
And if there's new tokens or other tokens, I think they're going to be finding adoption if they provide a platform in Web3. Which That's is, what I think. Which is utility, basically. Utility. Yes. That's right. So, so my, my last question is, is where do you see the future of NFTs and Web3 going? Where, where do you see this space going in the next few years? How do you see the space growing? Well, I see, and for NFTs, I see many companies like Fortune 500 companies implementing NFTs just for fun and okay. to enter into the, in the, into the trend to experiment as well. I see many companies like with budget to do it, they're gonna create experiences for users in metaverse in, uh, and they're gonna provide NFTs. There's, a, there's actually, well, there's many projects on the, on the making. I, I was contacted by, a, by, a, by, a, by an airline actually to develop this, these NFTs that they're gonna use for their membership, the VIP membership clubs. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. imagine they're, they're adopting it. You know, big companies are adopting NFTs and I think it's going to be continue growing and a, more in like an experimental phase. And, a, and well, on the other hand, I think many, many companies uh, are going to start developing more platforms and testing and see, we're gonna see many failures, but at, see, at the same time, we're gonna see many good experiments, many good projects coming up in the Web3 uh, space. So yeah. that's what I see. NFTs are staying, crypto is staying, um, not the way people see it now, but, uh, but uh, they will be making an impact and a change in the way we live, definitely. Okay, amazing. and. Uh... Jose, you know it's good to have you to 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 get your to to get your knowledge across and 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 to teach people about you know Web three NFTs and the metaverse. My my final question is is how do you explain the metaverse to my community? You know we're keeping it very simple today, so we're not making it too technical because I think one thing for sure is there's a lack of education in crypto still, and using you know technical words, people are not grasping it very quickly so they mm -hmm. need to know the basics metaverse where do you see it is this a buzzword or is this some sort of hype or is this something that's really going to change the world and is it is it going to change the world because some people say <laughs> ah it's just hype you know this is you know it's there's no such thing as metaverse let's just go back to reality what are you talking about <laughs> well you know, um, <laughs> the metaverse for your viewers, the metaverse have been existed, existing already for quite some decades in video games. So what, right. what is the metaverse? The metaverse is when your virtual identity, your digital identity connects with your real identity. And we've but seen do experiences we like- Do we need it? That's the question. We're in society now. Do we really need this or is it just hype? Uh, well, that's a good question. I, I wouldn't be in the position if we need it. I think, you know, when we had the internet as web web one, you know, we didn't yeah. need a web two, you know, we didn't need a web two. True, but true. when we when we had it developed, we, we enjoy it, you know, we enjoy it. So I see that that perhaps we don't need it, but it's going to be an amazing uh, game changer for internet the experiences, you know. Um, for the way we work, I don't see honestly. If you ask me, I don't see myself holding a VR headset for like eight hours a day. No. Um, but I see that say my, my, my many, for example, Vudo, the company that, I, that I'm, 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 I started, we're, we're allowing people to connect into a metaverse in their cell phones without the need of a VR headset. It's oh, a wow. metaverse for work. So people will be able to engage as if they were playing the Sims, you know, have yeah, you played yeah, the yeah. Sims? So, no, I've so it's like playing it. the Sims, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in the, in the office. So your right. your other avatars are your 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 peers, and then right. you exchange information, you share screen, you work. It's like that. I don't I don't want to enter into VR yet because I don't <laughs> see people so many hours there, because I don't see that we need it yet. But yeah. I think companies will leverage on the hype of the metaverse right now to develop experiences. Because if you think about it, there's only nine nine or ten million VR headsets worldwide. Sold. Yeah. sold but we yeah. have seven seven billion smartphones wow. so i think i think the metaverse has a long way to go yet you know to be having mass mass adoption in mass terms adoption, of VR. yeah but the metaverse as as we live it now let's say in your cell phone is going to grow and that's what we're looking for to grow a metaverse that you can access it from your cell phone and you can access you know if you if you play Fortnite, you already are part of a metaverse. The only difference 
is that in Fortnite, you don't own anything. You know, everything is owned by the platform. But yeah. in the metaverse, in, in Web3, what we're allowing is the experience to be able to, to give you something, that you own something that you can take it somewhere else. If you don't like this environment that I have for you, you can take your assets and bring it to another environment, you know? Amazing, that's what yeah. that, that's that's what it, it's it's happening and it's going to make it's going to happen we're still we're still in the early stages we're still in super the, early super early you know, we're yeah. gonna be old by the time this this happens <laughs> no i'm just kidding i don't think it'll take that too long because i think crypto is moving quite fast actually i would argue yeah. it's moving faster than the the information age you know the the, uh, yeah, the, yeah. the modem age the the those, 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 those took quite a while to develop. I think crypto is moving quite fast. So moving into metaverse and NFTs now is like a mind blower for people because people like, wow, where did this come from? You know, we were only yeah. talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum just the other week. And now we're talking about NFTs, the metaverse. So people are not catching up to what the changes that are happening in crypto. So mm -hmm. it's good to get you on board so that, that we can teach people what these mean, what, what these theories and meanings mean, right? So mm -hmm. yes, no, thank you for having me in, in your show. And I appreciate to, to be able to be part of your community and continue forward, man. You're, ki you're killing it. Continue educating I'm, I'm, your community and growing. And it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> and as uh, we'll uh, circle this round. So Jose, it's great to have you. You know, we learned some basics today. This is just uh, purely an educational video interview. No, there's no financial advice. This is just purely telling people what we think of the metaverse, the NFTs. And I've seen Jose talk about it. This is why I reached out to him to, to, to make it happen. So great right. to, to tell people what some of these uh, meanings mean. And um, maybe they will learn something from this uh, interview that we did. All right, Jose. Indeed. Privileged to have you, mate. Thanks a lot. Thank and, you so uh, much. We'll share it among to your network and my network as well. And uh, we'll uh, get people to see what they think of, of the interview. All right. Thanks, Jose. Thank you, Nice.